Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. People were waiting with bated breath to hear what William Ruto would say in that lengthy interview that was co-hosted with uh, several journalists, among them Sam Gituku. And I know people, many people wanted to hear something about the cost of living and maybe something about the altercation between Kenya and Congo. But I was interested in one particular area. This is the area of corruption. And in particular, there is a case that had dragged for over eight years now, the Aror Kimarer Dam case that started when William Ruto was the deputy president and it was concluded recently and when the judgment was made the judge the, the, the judgment was very curious and i have followed very closely this judgment but i wanted a follow up from the people in government because this is something that i, I was really interested and I wanted to talk about it. So I got the right opportunity today when the president was questioned about the Kimarel Aror Dam. And I want us to listen to William Ruto, his position, and then we juxtapose the position of the president and that of the judge who was in charge of this case, Eunice Nyoto. Take a look. If you followed Kimwarer, I said in the campaign trail that the case for Kimwarer was a fraud because it was, you know, because it was, because that case was being used politically. And that is why I have said, we do not want political cases. And that's why I have told the investigative agencies, I don't want them to help me with politics. I will do my politics. I will look for supporters. I will look for uh, the, all these groups, you know, uh, lobby groups and what have you. I will do politics. Them, they should dispense justice. No. And under my administration, there is nobody who will be prosecuted because of politics or politically or because they, don't, they, don't, they are not aligned to this way and that way. But you, nobody is going to hide behind politics. That because you are a, a politician, or because you are a friend of the president, or because you are a relative of the president, you are not prosecuted. That one I have said in public, and I have told every uh, cabinet minister, nobody should go to their office and tell them the president has sent them, or they are a relative of uh, Mr. X or Mr. Y, I will not send anybody to any office to do anything. Na, they must do their job in accordance with the law. Mshimo Raisi unaposema kesi ya Rod na Kimorero ilikuwa ni utapeli. Unamaanisha kwamba hakuna pesa zozote za mtoto ushuru zilizopotea katika kesi hii inayohusiana na mabao ya Rod na Kimorero. Sisi ndio tulipoteza hiyo pesa kwa sababu serikali wakati ilienda ikasimamisha hawa hawa ma contractor the contractors the contractors went to court right because they hadn't committed any crime number 1 we were supposed to give them land to do the dam you know we didn't give them the land the land was there but somehow and i don't want to accuse we, i think we have said let's 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 not talk about the past whoever was there decided they should not get the land because they wanted to frustrate the project. The, the land, the, the, the thing disappeared. The DCI was mobilized to go and get the contractor in Itari. Mm -hmm. You know, the, up to today, nobody knows what the problem was with Itari. They went to court. We have had to go and negotiate. Listening to the president very carefully, you realize that the president is take, uh, stating categorically that he had a position about this case. As a deputy president some years back, he had a position that this case 
was being used to settle political scores. That is what he said. And I remember at some point there was an altercation, a verbal altercation between Ruto and Raila Muludinga. Where Ruto was saying that we have only lost 9 billion Kenya shillings. And Raila was wondering whether 9 billion is a pocket change so that we can just wish it away and talk about it as if it is nothing. And then when William Ruto now ascended to power, he still has that position. The question that I want to ask you, do you think with such a position that was clear in his mind, do you think this case was going anywhere? Let us have a very honest discussion. And I will tell you that the answer is no. This case was dead on arrival. And I will tell you why. We have a president who has captured our judiciary. In the case of the finance bill, the High Court judge who ruled against it in the first ruling was transferred in what we were told was a normal exercise of, of, of just, uh, you know, transferring judges. But we all know that there was a sinister motive behind it. And even recently, the, the, the other judge who had ruled against it and said that uh, it was against the law, there was a twisted, a quick twist in which the case was now, you know, dragged to 2024, where the government will continue taking this money. And then you've seen that in Parliament, things are now happening, and this bill is coming back. So the judiciary was, is actually working for the executive. That is the reason why this case could not go anywhere, considering that the president already had a position. Number two, the president recently told us that he was given a sword and that sword will be used to deal with the people who do not want to tow the line. So that if you, you, you are reading from a different page from the president, then that authority, that sword will be used to bring you back. And you know, when someone is talking of a sword, and this is the same person who said, Mambo ni Mangapi. And one of the options is that you can be taken to heaven. Then people get worried. And with that intimidation, the people who are going to court to challenge him are in that bracket. The judges who listen and determine those cases are in the bracket. And so this kind of intimidation cannot allow this case to continue. The judge who made this ruling said something that is, is, is very sad. When she made the, the declaration, she said, all the accused persons in this case are hereby acquitted under section 210 of the criminal procedure code due to lack of evidence as a result of the reckless dereliction of duty by the prosecution. That was Magistrate Eunice Newto. That she was now forced to acquit Henry Rotich and all the other three co-accused because there was a lack of evidence. And if you read the judgment, there was lack of cooperation. In fact, even before this, there had been a battle where the, the, the DPP, Igonga, the man who was appointed recently, wanted to force the court to adjourn this case. And Eunice knew to stood her ground and said, no, you cannot direct the court on how you know, we conduct our issues. And so the best way to, to, to collapse this case was the DPP to conduct shoddy investigations. Some witnesses were never brought. In fact, just a quarter of them were brought. So that this case was frustrated by the DPP. 
because all the institutions are now taking phone calls from the executive arm of the government. For the better part of this week, and very many talk, people are talking about it, is the fact that the executive wing of the government gets what it's, it, it wants. The legislative arm has been captured and manipulated. The judicial arm has been captured and muzzled and manipulated. And you can talk of all the other institutions, the EACC, you will talk about the DCI, all of them are working for the interest of the executive. Now when the president says that his office cannot be used to settle political scores, we know what happened. We all live in this nation. We saw what happened to Fredo Kenyu Matiani. Recently we saw what happened to Oparanya. And I'm not saying that people should not be pursued when they are suspects of, 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 of corrupt cases. But selective justice, because we all know that this government is corrupt. David Diaz told us that there is wastage. The controller of budget, Margaret Nyakango, has said it. The loans are not used properly. People are inflating salaries of other government staff. So we, we, we know that even if the president is telling us that his office cannot be used or his government will not be used to settle political calls, we know that there are people who find a shelter under the wings of his office. David Koech was removed from jail under the presidential superpowers to pardon people who have been jailed. And we can go on and on citing examples where we have uh, fishy deals where people who are who had questionable characters have been pardoned because they have such a wonderful dalliance with this government. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think corruption can be fought in this government. When Raila Moludinka came up and talked about the Gulf G2G oil deal, people discussed it and we dismissed it, but we know that money has been lost. Then the, 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 the edible oil. In fact, today, Reverend Wainaina was talking about it at All Saints Cathedral. People are beginning to talk about it. In fact, many are now saying that we should, you know, lead a revolution against the government because the government is corrupt. They are taking people's money. They are high tax taxes and all that. And we know, someone was telling me that we should not even try to talk about corruption because William Ruto himself and the Kenya Kwanza team never campaigned on a platform of fighting corruption. They campaigned on a platform to, to rejuvenate and resuscitate our economy. But if there is one thing that is going to sink the nation deeper and deeper to the deepest abyss of, uh, of a financial quagmire is the corruption that we have. We are getting more loans. Kenyans are taxed highly. But corruption is eating the money away. When there was, were proposals for deduction, deductions of the housing finance, one of the biggest questions was, how safe is our money? When you bring all this money into a pool, how safe is it? And the question is still there. How safe is your money? Your guess is as good as mine.